In this movie, I'll introduce you to the recolor artwork command. But first, I'm going to go ahead and hide these custom library panels just because I want to get them off screen so that we can see that we have a bunch of copies of that emoji that we created back in chapter 22. And not surprisingly, we're going to recolor each one of them to different effect, starting with the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and I'll click on one eye with the black arrow tool and I'll shift click on the other one. And let's say I want to change these eyes from red to blue. Well, that could end up being a pretty complicated proposition because if I go to the window menu and choose the appearance command to bring up the appearance panel, you can see that we have a total of two fills and a stroke. And the fill is a white to transparent gradient, as you can see right there, subject to two dynamic effects. Then we have this fill in the background, which is a radial gradient that includes a total of three colors, starting with red one, then going to red two, and then toward the center, red three. And then finally, this stroke, which is also subject to a dynamic effect, goes from opaque on the inside to transparent on the outside. And so if we wanted to modify so much as the color of the eyes, it would typically take us a lot of work defining new swatches and adjusting the colors inside the gradient panel. But thanks to Recolor Artwork, this is a very easy proposition. And you get to the command in one of two ways. Either you can click on the circular Recolor Artwork icon up here in the control panel, but it does tend to shift around depending on what kind of selection you have. And so if for some reason you can't find it, then go up to the edit menu, choose edit colors, and then choose recolor artwork in order to bring up the recolor artwork dialog box. And I want you to notice a couple things here. First of all, over here on the right hand side, we're seeing a list of color groups. So we're only seeing those swatches that are organized into groups and nothing more. And because we don't really have much to work with, I'm going to go ahead and click on this arrowhead on the right hand side of the dialog box in order to collapse things so that we have a slightly simpler interface. Notice also that my selection handles have gone away. And that's not because the eyes are deselected, it's just because this dialog box automatically hides them so that you can better see what you're doing. All right, now I want you to notice that we have a total of five strips indicating the five colors that are at work inside the selected artwork. So we've got red one, red two, and red three in the radial gradient. We've got the yellow of the gradient stroke, and we have the white, which makes up the highlight gradient. Now by default, white and black are locked down. And you can see what I mean by clicking on this little dialog box icon to bring up the color reduction options dialog box. And notice that next to the word preserve here, white and black have check marks in front of them, grays doesn't. And that's the default setting once again. And the idea is that for most of us, white is page white. And so it's not something we want to modify. Or it's a background for a web graphic, perhaps. Or in our case, it's this highlight inside the eye. And so I do want to protect it. Blacks, which don't happen to occur in this selection, are the kind of thing you generally want to leave alone as well because you often have black body copy and that kind of thing. So you can always turn them off if you want to, but I'm just going to cancel out of here. And I want you to notice that as a result, this white strip right here, instead of having an arrowhead next to it, has just a line indicating that it's not going to change. Everything else, though, has an arrow indicating that it can change. And so over here in the left-hand area, that is the before color. And then this little guy on the right is the after color. And so you can modify it either by double-clicking on it, and that'll bring up the color picker dialog box. And then if you wanted to select a swatch, whether it's in a group or not, then you could click on color swatches and then grab one of these colors, such as brown one. You're not going to see the change happen, however, until you click OK. Now, that's not making a huge difference, and that's because brown one is already pretty close to that red. But it is updating ever so slightly on screen. What I want to do instead is just modify my hue, saturation, and brightness values, which you can get to by choosing HSB from this pop-up menu. And I'm going to go ahead and dial in a hue value of 240 degrees, and I'll leave the saturation at 100%, and then take the brightness value up to 40%, let's say. And notice how the gradient updates in the background. So all the incremental colors update dynamically. All right, now I'll select this second color right there. And I'm going to change the hue value to 240 degrees once again, leave the saturation at 100%, and leave the brightness at 60%. And then I'll select this final shade of red, change the hue value to 210 degrees, and otherwise leave the saturation and brightness set to 100% each. And you can see what a great job this does. With just that little work, we've updated a complex elliptical gradient 
with a custom center. Again, as you may recall from chapter 22. All right, now let's say I want to update the yellow as well. It actually looks okay the way it is, but let's say I decide now I want this stroke to be red. So I'll go ahead and change the hue value to zero degrees like so, and otherwise I'll leave the values as is. And as long as you have the recolor artwork checkbox turned on, then you can see the results happen in real time on screen. All right, now let's say I want to go ahead and save these colors as a group. Then I would click on this arrowhead on the right-hand side of the dialog box to once again expose the groups. And I'll go ahead and name this group Blue Eyes, let's say. And then I'll click on a little folder icon to create that new group. It doesn't really need white in it, but for now, I'll just leave it as is and click OK in order to accept the results. And then I'll click off the artwork to deselect it. And I'll grab that white swatch right there and I'll press the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click on the trash icon to get rid of it. And that's how you modify the colors of even complex objects with multiple gradient fills and strokes complete with dynamic effects using the recolor artwork command here inside Illustrator.